Hey folks, welcome back to Leaf Green vs. Blue. We're here in the Indigo Plateau at the Pokémon League, and we are just about ready to head off and face the Elite Four and Champion. First one up, of course, is Lorelei, the Ice-type Master, or Mistress, if you prefer, of the Cantonian Elite Four. Now, one thing I'll, I'll note as a kind of general overview, um, the levels for the Elite Four have been reduced by a few, um, pretty much across the board in the transition from Gen 1 to Gen 3. Maybe they felt that the improved AI and generally better movesets would be a uh, enough of a difficulty increase that they wanted to reduce the levels a bit. I don't know. Anyway, Lorelei leads off with a Dugong, um, and Dugong is uh, is introducing us to Hail, which is a, a common ailment here in the Lorelei fight. It is kind of ice-type weather, it hurts any non-ice-type Pokémon every turn for just a little bit of damage. Um, it's, it's mildly annoying, I guess. Um, this Dugong here in Gen 3 has a pair of quite good uh, stab moves. It has both Surf and Ice Beam to make use of its water and ice types. Um, it also has Thick Fat in case you want to use fire against it, although it is part water, so that's not the greatest idea in the world. Over in Gen 1, Hail does not exist, so don't have to worry about that. Um, Dugong here has Rest, which it does not have in uh, Gen 3, which means if you can't deal enough damage fast enough, it may heal back all of your hard work. It also doesn't have a Water move, and Aurora Beam is not as good as Ice Beam. Next up, Cloister. Very high physical defense, not so great special defense. Um, and Cloister here is basically here to waste your time. Um, it has Hail, you know, can reinforce that Hail dynamic, it has Dive, and it has Protect, so it can set up Hail and then just kind of goof around for, your, for a few turns while you try to hit it and it protects itself or it hides underwater. Um, it's a little annoying, but a good special move should basically one-shot it. Then we have Slowbro. Um, in Gen 3, much like the Dugong we met earlier, it has both Surf and Ice Beam, although it doesn't get stabbed from Ice Beam mercifully enough. Um, and it doesn't have a stab psychic move, so water is, is the only thing you should really be worried about. It does have Amnesia and Yawn, um, so it can put you to sleep and then get some special defense buffs up if you're trying to take care of it using special moves like Grass or Electric. Um, so you'll probably want to get in there and, uh, and, and do some damage real quick. I wouldn't recommend the Grass because it does still have Ice Beam, it just isn't a stab move. Dark's a good way to go, or Electricity, either way. Yep, there's that Yawn. Yawn is, uh, it's a kind of, it's an, it's an annoying move. It wastes your time, um, and it can't miss like Hypnosis can, so that makes it a little bit trickier to deal with. Um, over on the Gen 1 side, Slowbro, well, it has ups and downs. It still has Amnesia, and thanks to the merged special stat in Gen 1, Amnesia increases both its offensive and defensive capabilities on the special side. However, its only attack move is Water Gun. So, it's not gonna do a whole lot of damage unless it uses Amnesia at least once, possibly twice. Um, so, beat it quick, beat it quick. Um, so Lorelei's, I'd say, signature Pokémon is this Lapras, and this is a kind of weird thing I noticed in Gen 3, is that 
the the Elite Four tend to use their signature Pokemon second to last rather than last. I'm not totally sure why. Um, I mean, you you could maybe make the argument that Jinx is her signature Pokemon, but I've always thought it was Lapras. Um, so much like other Pokemon before it, this Lapras has Surf and Ice Beam, and it gets stabbed from it, um, or from both, just like Dugong. Also has Confuse Ray and Body Slam, so a nice array of, of hard-hitting moves, and Confuse Ray. Confuse Ray is so annoying. <laughs> I, I'm gonna save my complaints about Confuse Ray for a later fight, but, uh... It, it can definitely be annoying if you uh, if you don't have anything to snap your Pokemon out of it. Um, overall, any strategy that you were using against Dugong is probably going to do all right against Lapras as well. They're both bulky water ice types um, that have more or less the same type coverage, so uh, it's it's gonna gonna go roughly the same way both times. One thing to note is that uh, the signature Pokémon for each Elite Four member has a Citrus Berry, which is a berry that restores 30 HP um, upon its consumption. It gets better in later generations, but in Gen 3 it's just 30 HP, which isn't that much, especially for a uh, high HP Pokémon like Lapras. In Gen 1, Lapras has actually stronger stab moves. It has Blizzard and Hydro Pump. Um, the trade-off being that they have worse accuracy. So uh, if you're lucky, you can dodge the blizzards and dodge the hydro pumps and you'll be a happy camper. If you are unlucky, they will do a lot more damage to you. Um, and the thing to keep in mind is that in Gen 1, AI opponents do not run out of PP, so you can't stall them out of blizzards or hydro pumps. Last but not least is Jinx. Jinx is an Ice Psychic type. Um, you won't have to worry much about the Psychic type, though. What you will have to worry about is her feminine wiles, her sexuality. You should always be afraid of powerful women. Powerful women are, are always the enemy. Let this be a lesson to you. Um, so in Gen 3, she has Lovely Kiss and Attract. Lovely Kiss, you just saw, put us to sleep. Attract is a move that will cause infatuation in Pokémon of the uh, the traditionally opposite gender. So any male designated Pokémon here will have a chance of not attacking Jinx if she uses Attract. It's very annoying. I find it more annoying than Confusion, even though I don't hurt myself when it when it rears its ugly head. Um. So this this lovely kiss attract combo. Just really annoying. Just really, really annoying. And get rid of the sleep with a Poke Flute, but it's still really annoying. Um, Offense-wise, she's got Ice Punch and she's got Double Slap. So, uh, I mean, you, you probably know at this point in the fight not to bring any Grass types. You still could get Frozen Solid, which stinks. <laughs> um, but luckily, I used Kingsley's uh, effect, special effect, special ability to my advantage. If I can't attack because I'm asleep or infatuated, I can still do damage through poison using Poison Point. Um, so that was not... I don't know if that was intentional or not, because I recorded this five years ago, but it certainly was a good turn of events for me. This Jinx caused me some problems. It did. Good work, Kingsley. You're a good lad. Um, so, in order to get around the attract business, you can bring in a female Pokémon. I think also genderless Pokémon will, uh, will not be affected by attract. So, here, I brought in Katrina. Um, and I could have used Faint Attack, I guess. That might have been super effective. I don't know if it would have been more powerful than Return. Yeah, that'll do. That's plenty. That's plenty of damage. Bye-bye, Jinx. 
So in Gen 1, Jinx does not have that same lovely kiss attract combo. She has Body Slam and Thrash instead. So some pretty, you know, pretty decent normal type moves. But they're not as annoying. They're not going to be super effective because they're normal type. Um, overall, I would say she is easier to deal with in Gen 1 despite being two levels higher. Um, she still has Ice Punch. Also has Double Slap, but uh, that didn't come into play here because she got locked into Thrash. And look at me trying to use Hydro Pump. I hope you learned a lesson past me. Hydro Pump is never worth it. This garbage accuracy is for trash people. And that takes care of the first member of the Kanto Elite Four, Lorelei. And in the next episode, we will take care of Bruno, the fighting type master. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.